Hey guys, what's happening? So, I have a couple more 3D printers to fix come in. So, so on the personal stuff now, I'm just kind of fixing the stuff on the weekends and after hours. Um, just because I'm too busy during the day with the uh, business stuff, IT and uh, you know business uh, 3D printers. <clears throat> but the thing is, what sucks is I can't film the 3D printer, the business 3D printers. Um, I can do the personal stuff, but some of the more crazy, high advanced printers, I can't even film it. I wish I could show it to you guys, the, the laser centering printers, but, um, you know, metal printers, but, yeah, I just can't film it in, in the place we're working at because it's all classified stuff. Um, Alright, so got this uh, Bamboo Labs P15, or P1, I, actually I've never worked on one of these before. I've worked on a lot of Carbon, Carbon X1s, but not this one. So this, this I, so as far as I know, it's just a scaled down Carbon X1, smaller LCD. So I think it's about half the price as a Carbon X1, but um, yeah, my only issue with really with the the Bamboo Labs um, stuff is the firmware. It's not really a it's not great for a secure environment, uh, just because of the way it wants to connect to the internet. Um, mainly, like if you're working in like some kind of classified area, it's it's harder to control security. I mean, you can't because I work in IT. You can actually have a separated VLAN. And you can isolate the printers, but still, like, only allow traffic to come from Bamboo Labs back to the printer. But, um, yeah, I program firewalls for a living. So, <clears throat> all right. So, all right. So, the customer said this thing actually had uh, a jam. And, like, this, he, the guy actually seemed like he was pretty knowledgeable. So, kind of curious. Like, he was, you know, it's not uncomfortable taking the stuff apart. And, and uh, so, he kind of, he really looked at it. So, um, if you're not familiar with the Bamboo Lab stuff, there's a separate, like, little, uh, you know, a couple different PCBs on the tool head. And, uh, you know, there's basically firmware on the tool head itself. So basically, it uh, runs like the, you know, there might be a... Uh, what's funny is they had multiple revisions of the boards. But I'm thinking Carbon X1. I'm not thinking this one here, so... Um, but it has the AM, AMS unit. He said that works fine. Well, it, it, it seems like it works fine, but then it goes down and won't load, load into the head. Like there's some kind of jam or the motor's not spinning correctly. Uh, the extruder motor. So um, I'm going to fire this up, put it on my test bench here. I'm going to find a spot for it over here. And then, um, yeah, some of these printers now are getting so big, it's more difficult, you know. So, all right, so I've unplugged the buffer. I know that sometimes when people take the buffer apart, the, the, they'll get the, the magnet, the magnet uh, backwards. But he said, like he said, he said it wasn't an issue with the buffer, so... This is, uh, like I said, this is the first P1S I've actually played with, but it feels pretty good, pretty sturdy. Um, it has the carbon rods, too. So, I don't know if this thing has been upgraded. Um, all right, let me go look at get some more specs, because I thought the Carbon X1 was, well, it is, it has a bigger screen on it, but... All right, let me get the top glass off here, too. All right, so he has an 0402 um, box and stuff here. So I'm going to try to get this to work without the AMS unit first, and then I'll mess around with that. But yeah, I'm not, like I said, this is the first, actually, at Bamboo Labs I've messed with this the smaller screen. Um, you know, the black and white screen versus the color, big color screen. All right, oh, that means I'll have to connect to my network. All right, so the unique thing about the situation is the customer said that he could feed the filament when the printer was not powered on, but when it was uh, powered on, he couldn't feed it through. And that, he seemed like that was a problem. So I'm thinking maybe the extruder motor, well, the fan's not connected, so i got to figure that out. I just popped off. Um, it's possibly the extruder motor is maybe one of the windings isn't connected or is partially like it requires two windings for the motor to move so if you're only getting half power to one of the coils so there's two individual coils that pulse that move the f move the move the motor forward so if only one was actually powered it would lock it up it wouldn't move at all all right so, so i can get it past the extruder gears my little metal rod here Alright, let me heat this up and see if I can push it through. 
Alright, so I should be able to melt the, I mean this, I should be able to get past the motors and down to the nozzle. Alright, see so it went right through like that. Okay. Alright, so there's no clog. I see I was able to push the filament through. And, and the motor's not locked up. Alright, now let's see what happens when I do an extrude. Alright, so it doesn't seem like it wants to grab the filament as I'm pushing it through. Because the AM, remember the AMS is just going to push it to this thing, to this point. And this has to be able to grab onto it, you know? Like you're not going to, I, 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 I purposely didn't cut it at a sharp po point. Obviously you'd want to have a sharp point to get through there, you know, to fish it, be able to fish it through into the, into the gears. But the a AMS is not going to be able to do that, so, or not reliably. So, I need to figure out why it's not grabbing onto my filament here. It's like it's locked up. My, my thing will fish through. My, my uh, grab tool goes through. Okay. You know, I think there's something going on in the filament detection sensor here. Um, because it feels really stiff to push through there until I get to the gears, right? Um, like, there should be... I mean, yeah, some of the filament, like the ones with the bearings, you know? I, I gotta open this up and take a look at it and see what's inside there because... I don't know if the AMS is gonna have enough power to push through that. The tension right there. You know, this printer is not as popular as the X1 Carbon, but... I mean, they're very similar, so... Um, Alright, so I'm gonna take off... First I'm gonna take off the PC... Well, first I gotta take off the cutter. Then the PCB. There's a small ribbon cable you gotta be really careful with here. Um, and these two right here. So the PCB slowly removed, I'm gonna come back and <clears throat> get those other two off. You know, you gotta be really careful with the, these uh, Bamboo Lab printers because these ribbon cables will snap or cut really easily. Uh, these connectors will break really easily. So they're kind of fragile printers on the on the tool head, so this should just come out like that. Alright, so my hands are closed and look at this. Put this light on here. Alright. I'm looking for debris in there or something. Um, you say, well, actually, I don't. I might have a debris might have already fallen out of it already because um, I heard something crunch when I pull, popped it off. So something might have already popped out, but right now it looks like it's. Uh, I mean, it's pretty clean inside. All right, so there must have been something in it because now it's real easy to move through. Like before, it was really difficult to get stuff through this thing. You know, it was locked in there. Like, it was grabbing, you know? So, um, yeah, there might have been a piece, like, in the back that was preventing the, the spring from going back. Like, there might have been a part in there. So I'm going to blow this out of my air compressor just as a precaution, but, yeah, it was stiff. Stiff, stiff. Alright, so now, before I completely put it back together, yeah, I want to make sure this goes down. There it does. So it's not, it was so hard, I guess you can't tell on the camera, but it was really hard to push through. Like, there was something jamming this thing back. I ain't got it back together. You know, I've actually fixed hundreds of 3D printers, all different makes and models, and you kind of get a sense that I, I, I kind of get a feeling I know how it's supposed to feel. So I just knew that didn't feel right. All right. I'm not sure you guys can see that. That's the filament sensor run out ribbon cable. See that hole through it? Yeah, because I'm actually loading filament right now. I'm doing some tests on it, and it, I mean, everything, like I said, it seems like it feeds right. Whatever it was jammed in there, I got that out of there. But I feel like the, it's, it's loading the filament. It loads the filament up to the sensor, right? And then it jams because it doesn't detect the sensor, right? And then it, so it backs off, and I think there's a, there's a jam in the system. So, yeah, there's a hole in that cable. The ribbon Very cable. Very cool. Replacement part comes in, or came in. Yeah, obviously, this is not a professional studio. I fix stuff here. I'm not... <laughs> Filming like a like a real show here. Um, okay, so all right. So my theory of what's actually happening because the filament sensor is not working correctly, right? The filament comes up, hits hits the the basically the drive gears, uh, and then you know basically jams and pumps back, right? There's a, there's a timing function here involved, um, but you can tell because the drive gear. So it's it probably the filament comes up. Hits the filament sensor and then enables, tells the drive gears to turn on, right? But if the drive gears aren't spinning to load the filament, right? It's not going to know when to stop. So it's, just, it's, it's basically hitting the drive gears and, and it's uh, it's jamming up. So let me show you this real fast. Stop you all. Okay, load. 
All right, so it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna try to load this black film in right here. All right. Now it's gonna warm up. There it goes. It's coming in, as you can see it. Jams. Drive gears aren't feeding, right? Okay, so normally you'd, you probably can't see from this angle, but the, the, the drive gears would have to feed it into there, right? So it reels it back out. It does it like five times and then it fails out. So my thought, well, obviously I can see the hole in the cable, but here it comes again. It's gonna do this like five times probably and fail out. Because it's not detecting the filament coming in. Boom, hits it, right? So at this point, it, what it should do is, okay, it should say, okay, I detect the filament, now enable the drive gears, feed it into the actual extruder. Okay, so after so much time, I'm gonna get this right here. Like I said, I've worked on so many different 3D printers that it's like, I mean, they all kind of follow the same pattern, but it's like, you just kind of get a sense of this stuff after a while. All right, so, all right, I'm gonna pull that filament out and replace that filament sensor. Filament sensor placed again, on there again. And, um, all right, let's do a view all load. Okay. All right, it's gonna heat up the temperature. Come back. All right. Let's get ready. Okay, let's do it. I'm getting ready to load right now. So hopefully this works. I'm gonna mock up right there. What's up with this thing? <laughs> go, go, go. I mean, this film is probably jacked because it's been loaded in and out so many times. Right, let's try that again. I think just the film is so chewed up. There it goes in, it's loading in. Should be grabbing it. Why is it going the opposite direction? You know, even though it seems like it was working, I'm gonna look at everything here just to make sure. Look at the gears. Yeah, like I said, it's just the just loading the filament. It's not, I mean, because I can actually let me make sure the spring tension looks good too, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I don't feel I don't feel like there's a problem here, but it's know, it's just not grabbing. You know, I hear a lot of people actually have issues with these magnets. I'm going to try flipping that around. Um, yeah, there's just something weird. Like I said, it gets to the extruder. It wants to feed, but it doesn't feed. So I'm not next if this doesn't work. I'm going to check the alignment. Just double check. But everything seems fine. It's weird. Oh, I got it to load. Turn my CB radio down. But yeah, that's... Um, yeah, it's, it's not just... It wasn't just one problem here. But I'm, I'm going to try it again. Make sure it's reliable. But... So far, it hasn't been one, one problem. It's been a the bad filament sensor and this magnet. I flipped the magnet around in the buffer. Whereas the uh, the red stripe is facing the out, outward. So red the red stripe is facing this direction, this very, uh, towards the spring. So the red stripe is on the spring, this direction, not on this side. So I wanted to open it up. The red stripe was going this on this side. So I put it that way. So that's crazy. So I'm not sure if the... Because I know he was doing a lot of troubleshooting, so I think some of the stuff got broken in the troubleshooting process. So I'm going to ask him when he picks it up if he flipped the buffer spring or took the buffer apart. Hey, cool. Parents working. So, yeah, it was so two simultaneous problems. It was a combination of that, the filament sensor, not something wrong, wrong with the filament sensor, obviously it was holding the cable. But also that buffer spring being backwards. Um, yeah, nothing easy. I mean, yeah, I get, I mean, yeah, because it was two simultaneous things actually happening, so it was sort of a headache. Um, okay, cool. Just, uh, you know, I think I had messed with that buffer spring problem before. That's why I, I, I went to look at it. But, um, all right, cool. So if you're in the Orange County area and want me to look at your printer, uh, let me know. Links are down below. LC3DTech.com. All right, awesome.